Uh, Mr. Price, is this your first visit to Great Britain? Oh, dear, no. I, I went to school in London. Many, many years ago, I went to the Courtauld Institute at the University of London to uh, be an art historian, as a matter of fact, at that time. And then I started my career in the theatre in London at the Little Gate Theatre under Charing Cross Station. Mm, yes, indeed. And is this the first film, then, that you've made over here? Yes, it is. It's the first film I've ever made. I, I've been scheduled to do a couple, but they've always fallen through. But this one is uh, apparently going on. Really going through. It certainly is. Well, let's um, come from the present and go way back. First of all, perhaps you do remember even at this stage, uh, which was the first film you appeared in that, uh, that uh, cinema goes will remember you in? Well, uh, I suppose the, the first film I ever did was with Constance Bennett many years ago called Sylvester Looks. And uh, Misha Auer and Charlie Ruggles, it was a wonderful mm. cast of people. It was a dreadful picture. <laughs> but it was great fun to be in. But much of your earlier work, perhaps a little uh, later than that, uh, was, uh, were in prestige pictures like Song of Bernadette, uh, yes. Wilson, and another one I recall was uh, Keys of the Kingdom. Well, now that you find yourself in horror films more, how do you look back on those days? Uh? Well, as a matter of fact, I, I kind of think it's, uh, it's fun to be doing these kind of thrillers, as I call them. I, I make a differentiation between thriller and horror, because I think the horror pictures are the ones that deal with reality, uh, like The Man with the Golden Arm or The Blackboard Jungle. They scare me. Uh, these pictures are meant to entertain and not scare. That's a very interesting <laughs> differentiation. Thank you. So I call them thrillers. Uh, would you say that the villain was a villain, whatever he appeared in? That's <laughs> right. I, I've done a lot of villains. They're much more fun than the hero, you know, because the hero has to play himself, and that's one of the reasons you go in the theater is to hide. You really relish being a villain, do you? I love it. It's great fun. I remember you particularly in Three Musketeers, Gene Kelly. Was that an early stage in your career of villainy? No, well, Cardinal Richelieu is hardly a villain, you know. Mm, perhaps not. Uh, and, of course, they wouldn't let me play him as a cardinal either, so he was Mr. Richelieu, which I believe we were told to pronounce Richelieu. Mm -hmm. It's good American pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> I know what to do for Europe. Was um, the first of your three-dimensional films, the one which I'm sure a great many people remember you in, House of Wax, uh, I think they'll mostly remember you for that, was this when the so-called horror, as you call it, thriller film, yeah. really began? For that you? was the first one I uh, ever did of that really genre of film. Mm -hmm. It was uh, tremendous fun because it was a brand new medium. It was experimental in every way, and of course it, it was a tremendous success all over the world. I think it still played flat, <laughs> you know, <laughs> without the glasses. Mr. Price, I'd like you to answer this quite honestly. Do you ever have bad dreams at night? Well, sometimes, but they're usually dreams about what I'm going to do on the screen in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> what scares you personally, if anything? Well, very little. I, I'm terrified sometimes of uh, certain elements that I think frighten most people, like height, for instance. I, I'm not very given to being on the top of a cliff. Uh, I have certain phobias that most people have. Uh, in these films, as a matter of fact, we've explored a great deal of the things that frighten people. For instance, men are particularly frightened of cobwebs. I don't know why, but you'll find men who can't stand cobwebs. They make them very nervous. So we've used cobwebs in almost every <laughs> film to frighten the male population. Calculated to scare. Mm. Let's get a little more serious for a moment, Mr. Price, because I understand you're very active outside your film career, uh, giving lectures and tours and so forth in the States. Would you care to tell me a little more about that? What are the lectures about for a start? Well, I, I've always been very interested in art ever since I was here at the Courtauld and long before that, as a matter of fact. And uh, in the past 25 years, I've become very identified with the art of my own country. In the first place, I think Americans have sold themselves short culturally, and I feel that we have allowed the rest of the world to sell us short. And I go around America lecturing about American art, trying to make people understand that we have a great cultural heritage in my country. And I believe this sincerely, and it's been proven in recent years, because I think American artists have had a tremendous influence on the world of art. Most of the abstract expressionist school, as a matter of fact, started in New York and in Los Angeles and San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I also lecture on Vincent van Gogh and Walt Whitman, and uh, it's a complete Americana program. 
And if I may say, a complete and most praiseworthy counterpoint to your other career. Well, it's kind of fun, as a matter of fact, because I, I've lectured so far in about 350 colleges in the United States and uh, Canada, for that matter. And really, no one sort of ever confuses these two roles I play. I, I'm now the, uh, started the art department for the biggest department store in the world, the Sears Roebuck mm -hmm. in America. I bought last year 35,000 works of art, which is quite a lot. A great many of them here in London. That's some buying. <laughs> well, let's come right up to date, Mr. Price, and get back to your film career. Uh, the film you're making at the moment here at Elstree, Street, Mask of the Red Death. Can you tell me a little more about that and your role well, in it? You know, it's another Edgar Allan Poe story, and I think almost the best of all of them. But this time, instead of either playing it tongue-in-cheek or straight for the thrills in it, we actually are, are playing it more as a morality play, which I think the story is, basically. It uh, has beautiful ballet and wonderful music and marvelous costumes, and uh, I think it can really be one of the most exciting of all these stories. And, of course, in color. Oh, in glorious color and glorious something or other, Panavision or whatever. Are it's there like. any particular difficulties in this one? Well, one of the problems, I, I think, in it is uh, to bring it all off as movement. Uh, to keep the continuity and flow as though it were all a ballet and all movement. And I think it has that. Roger Corman is, is brilliant at this kind of thing. And we have uh, Jack Carter, who's one of your best choreographers here in England, doing it. We shall certainly look forward to seeing it. Just one final question, yeah. Mr. Price. Do you ever get the feeling that strangers are perhaps shying away from you, moving to the other side of the road sort of feeling? No, you know, I, I really don't. As a matter of fact, I think they sort of like villains, particularly women. They identify the villain with their husband, and consequently, they flock around. Good <laughs> price. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's nice to see you. All right, let's look at it once. Okay, fellas, you have... Right now, settle down, boys. <laughs> yes. All right, and uh, when David speaks, you show them off. Okay, now try please. We'll look at it once. All right. You all like the bit. Right now, come on, boys, quiet. Tell you what, Peter. Get your right a little and hold him with both hands. That's it. Really. Right, make it a red light, please, for Shirley now.